I'm just going to call this video Florida Tartaria and I just wanted to show some amazing artwork. I've got a cool translation and I just wanted to show some incredible old buildings that are seem mysterious to me about early Florida. And so this says Florida was discovered by Ponce de Leon in 1513 and St. Augustine founded by Menendez 1565 plundered and burned by Sir Francis Drake 1585. And the text that I'm going to translate is from 1591, and it's just interesting, and I want you to keep this all in mind, that I am taking this from an artist's perspective. I'm not a historian, I'm not an archaeologist, anthropologist. I took a couple classes in each, and I did research and like to learn about everything. But again, I'm just an artist. I use my imagination to try and break through kind of new thoughts and introduce kind of things that just bring you guys into my mind for a little bit. And I love what you all share because you all help. And actually this was inspired by an angel from Florida who has uh, been in contact with me and kind of brought a lot of this up to my attention. So I wanted to uh, give her a shout out. But take a look at these old maps and these old amazing parts of Florida, these old visions of Florida. They look so like incredible. It looks as if Florida has been known for a long time and given its geographical spot in this world you can tell that if things and beings and humanity and giants and whatnot were traveling this world on sea, by air, whatever for a long time, the ancients, they were able to build pyramids, everything like that, then they were definitely making it over to Florida and having a great time there because it is such a beautiful spot. I can't wait to move there and I'll talk about that later at the end. But here, this is what I'm going to translate and then I'm going to do another separate video later where I translate more from this book because it's unbelievably fascinating from 1591, but I say I five nine one I think it's a slight difference there's something that just doesn't really if you know if Ponce de Leon found this earlier and then why are all these natives kind of you know there's something that just doesn't add up so I wanted to translate this and then I'll show some old buildings from the Tampa Bay University Tampa Bay Hotel and just when I explore this video deeper this book deeper it's gonna be intense but this one's just a little more fun so here we go this says the Floridians honor a column placed by the prefect on the first voyage so the prefect, a leader of an administrative area or something, etc. So then the rest of the text continues when the Gauls, which is very important because the Gauls are never really mentioned in that other history pages or some Wikipedias. But so the text says this, when the Gauls landed in the province of Florida, having established a second voyage under the command of Leodonarius, he himself descended into the continent with five companions and twenty pixadaris, I'm not sure what that is, having received safety from the Indians, for they had come in droves to gaze upon them. King Athor also came, dwelling four or five miles from the seashore, the gifts being given and received and presented to every kind of humanity. He declared that he wished to demonstrate something special to them, and therefore begged them that they might go together. He, however, led them down to the island in which Ribaldus had placed a stone border engraved upon a hill in the insignia of the king of Gaul. Our neighbors, having observed that the Indians observed that this rock was not so different from its character, the king himself greeted and exhibited the kind of honor he is accustomed to receive from his subjects and fixed a kiss, which his subjects imitated and encouraged them to do the same. Before the stone lay various gifts of the fruits and roots of the edible region, or consistency for medicinal purposes, and the vessels full of fragrant olives, bows, and arrows. In view of the right of these wretched barbarians, they returned to their countrymen to observe the most convenient place for erecting a fort. But here King Athor is very handsome, wise, honest, stout, and very tall in stature, surpassing the greatest of our men a foot and a half endowed with a modest dignity that in him is in his majestic spectacle may shine forth he contracted a marriage with his mother and from her he received several children of both sexes whom he showed us by striking the thigh but after he was betrothed to him his parents satoriova did not touch her any longer so jeez the rest of that book is going to be outrageous but wow giants too was that king of giant and were they in florida and were they building things very interesting and tartarians a lot of these things this building in particular they have very middle eastern -y kind of tartarian-esque structures on a lot of the tops of them the other one more so 
But did you also check that Wikipedia where it says the Gauls emerged in the 5th century BC, supposedly, according to them. So that means probably way earlier than that. And then these are talking about the Gauls in Florida in I-590, like I-500s or something. So what? Like, how many years off is everything? Have they just kind of, do they have a library somewhere with just all the half the alphabet and each one has a thousand years to it and they're just kind of bust out whatever they want in order to fit the narrative who knows but look at this architecture look at this amazing architecture so pristine at this time you know it could be freshly built i'll never you know i have to believe and I, I i get to suspend my belief for both sides and kind of you know give a, the potential i really just don't know I, you know someone out there might have a relative that built this or worked on it and uh, so or it could be something different and ancient and repurposed here and uh, cleaned up, polished up at this time. Whoever won this battle that they hide from us, that whatever really happened in America from 1770s on, uh, whatever that true history was, you know, could explain why these came about at this time in the 1800s, why Florida started just picking up being amazing. There are so many forts, though, in Florida. There's so many amazing buildings, and there's so many forts. And I know now there's a ton of amazing buildings that they've built in the last hundred years, clearly. And so, you know, it's always as possible that they were able to do immaculate things. But just, I find it fascinating that the, the Islamic-style Mohammedan architecture, and, uh, you know, you find all kinds of old books with Tartaria in Florida and in America and all different kinds of signs that there was an ancient culture here beyond our fathomability. And that's just the main part is just that it was scrubbed and it was meticulously scrubbed from reality and made sure that only the surviving things that we can see or that ever get published remain and keep us in eternal mystery like these forts are amazing star forts how deep do they go what was their purpose how high did they go what was inside them what were they used for who really built them how many people did it take were they giants this is a mind blower at the end of the keys I'm just beginning to see a lot of different possibilities now of sunken civilizations. Someone is actually reporting, I forget who, that New Orleans is starting to have a lot of discoveries along their outskirts in different harbor kind of things that are underground that could have been massive cities that are buried in the, in the lakes, in the water, in the river, in the gulf, and everywhere. It's just all underneath perpetually. It's just a time for some scuba archaeologists to start really exploring a lot of these canals in Florida and a lot of these different things. Like how is the, how are there so many canals in Florida and you know, were they all dug during modern time when we're able to prove it? Or how many of them are ancient? How many of them are both just how many parts of Florida lie underneath the marshy land that have sunk and that have uh, been built upon and upon again, you know, how many times do things sink and then landfills come upon them? These, you know, 500 BC, the Gauls were here and interacting with those kind of people depicted in that artwork, and it's detailed artwork. It's definitely a little imaginary-ish or just kind of a, a embellished, but kind of not. You know, they draw the, the kings in the armor really beautifully, and so they, they draw everything. It's really tough to tell the truth. But we have to use the imagination and really think. And I just love Florida so much. Like, I have a distant memory of Florida when I was really young, like, just smelling the plants. And every time I go to Florida now, it takes me immediately back there. Or if I ever get a whiff somewhere else in the world, it just takes me back to that Florida and fills me with the best feelings of all time. And it is my goal, me and my wife's goal, our family's goal, to move to Florida from Massachusetts to migrate down there hopefully around the Naples area or somewhere over along the coast on that side. So if anyone out there, please, if you're from Florida and you, have, and you know of anyone that could use our art, would need a mural or anything, we are looking for ways to get there and to justify our move. We know that we could make, be more successful down there because up here it's, it's tough. People don't really appreciate the color we have to offer. And um, down there, I think they will. And I want to be smothered in heat for the rest of my life and beautiful birds and nature and amazing, incredible people. So if you have any way to help me down there, I would love to bring my art down there and I will reward you amazingly if we can make it amazing and work. Bless you all. You all are incredible. Now back to these. Just take a look at these pictures. I don't have too much to say. I don't want to totally babble, but, you know, again, the capitals are all the same. They're all 
How do they build them with horse and carriage? You know, these things are just incredible. How do they get the machines to make the structures go all the way down? You know, find a way to root these things in the water so low and have them sustain through time. These towers, like, boom, what's the point of the embellishments on the top of a lot of these? Like, the bells, I can see, definitely a, an important role, but, you know, did our modern 1800s people really pay that much need for that? Or, you know, have that much of a need for an observatory and a lookout, <laughs> like, during for a hotel? It's, it's, it's so much money. And these churches are there all over the place, and they seem, um, they just seem out of place. They seem like they're all, there are just so many scattered different buildings around America from different, from a time that just seems, it just seems ancient. And, you know, they have Europe. It's, it's constantly a nag that they have these buildings similar in Europe and they're given that more accurate dates of, of construction. And those could even be fake. Like, uh, you know, who, how much, how much wool have the uh, controllers put over our eyes and you know, what will we believe? How much have we been conditioned to, to think? And how much have we been conditioned to absolutely not think? You know, trains on this giant stone thing. How did they, how could they have built that in the time of these postcards? Like it would, I feel like it would take so much manpower and like in working in tropical climates isn't easy. It's amazingly hot. It's great to make clay and bricks, but it's incredibly hot to work and hard. And look at these star forts, the same ones all over the world. Amazing columns, amazing descriptions, godly imagery carved into marble, lions representative of just ancient cultures, royal symbols, and they're all over Florida. Like what? Why would a hotel manager pay for that extra millions of dollars for the top? Unless it was something ancient that we don't know about. It's just so much mystery. God, I love Florida. What an incredible place. And imagine being there at these times, swimming in that water, getting, be, knowing somewhat closer to the truth than we actually know now. It would be it just, it would be amazing. I really want to be in a beautiful place with uh, so many amazing animals around where so much of the year can be utilized. Like winter's just ending up here in Massachusetts and every year I just realize, wow, I spent six months like majority inside and going outside is, is, is not as comfortable. It's cold, it's tough. I want to be able to utilize almost every day. I want to be with people that are friendly and happy all the time. I want to see, be able to snorkel and go in the water and just be inspired by these amazing animals and take our family to see all these beautiful adventures everywhere. God, I absolutely love Florida. If there is anyone out there, this is almost an artistic SOS from us. I don't like to do this. I don't like to shamelessly promote, but it is an SOS. If anyone knows anyone in Florida that could utilize our art, I'm trying to make moves. I'm trying to bring our art there. Our dream is to have a Save Earth gallery all over the world, but starting in Florida, where the artwork is from people all over that are positive, using it for amazing messages, using it for positivity and great goals and achievements and raising money, and just have incredible artists utilizing their skills to help the earth. And really, I think it would be the perfect place to start it down there and i'd love for you all to join me in this quest and join us all in this quest and whoever's down there in florida bless you bless you all all over the world and i hope we all just get to a point where reality and everything is treated the way it deserves to be because this evil has got to end and when we can all experience our just paradise on earth the way it was meant to be it will be quite a time for earth Bless you all.